Is anyone else tired of games in recent times? I know I don't need to talk about the disappointments that have come out this year, but the real question is why. I think there's a huge underlying issue in the gaming industry, but that's not the point of this video. I know many people have had this same dilemma of not knowing what game to play. Risk of Rain 2 is one of those games that looks cool, but you feel kind of unsure about it, so you took to YouTube and watched a review about it. Or you got recommended this randomly from the algorithm. Either way, you're here, and once you play it, all of those worries are cast aside, and you feel a sense of euphoria playing this game that you haven't felt since you were a child. The game revolves around the fact that you are a survivor who has crashed landed on the planet and are fighting to survive. This game is an indie, roguelite, third person, shooter, sci-fi, get obliterated by an ancient lunar god stuck on the moon silently fuming and attempting to seek revenge on his brother. Yeah, this game has it all. So, the core gameplay loop is extremely enjoyable due to multiple playable characters, each of which with varying abilities, multiple interchangeable abilities per character, as well as different skins for each character. And what's this? You don't have to pay $20 for a terrible skin for one character? It's just complete challenges to unlock everything in the game from character skins and abilities to the different character themselves? Wow. I can't believe it. Now, not only is it that there are multiple playable characters, each with varying abilities and everything, that make this game enjoyable, it's also the fact that there are varying stages, minor mobs, and bosses that make the game not feel stale and repetitive after consecutive runs because you took too long on the second stage looting for just one piece of equipment so you totally be prepared for the three stack ritual of the mountain boss fight you have ahead of you. Even though you opened every container on the map and have multiple drones to insist you, <sighs> did I also mention this game is four player co-op? Now I don't have friends to play with on PC. Now up until now, it may seem like I've been complaining and saying the game is too hard. But it's not a complaint, it's simply me getting frustrated that I'm not skilled enough to rush through the levels and get equipment while not taking too long at each individual stage, because in this game it has its own mechanic, where the enemy's level is determined by how long you spend actively playing the game. And as you go through the difficulties, you notice more enemies are elemental, type fire and ice and even healing. Until eventually you get so far in the game that bosses casually start spawning. And they're definitely easier than when you started the game, but they're still definitely difficult to deal with when you have like five of them spawn on you. So in the game, you really want to balance how long you spend on each stage looting. So as to not be in super crazy hard mode on stage two. But before you comment, oh, why don't you just speed run immediately to the boss portal to progress to the next stage? Well. That is because the equipment in Risk of Rain, and in many other roguelites, are what not only make the game fun, but also your one saving grace that can entirely make or break any runs you have. If you get extremely lucky in the first few levels, then you can steamroll the bosses for the most part until you get to this final stage. Once you get to stage 5, the amount and type of enemies increases drastically, which makes sense because this could be the final stage before you fight the final boss or until you roll over into a sort of endless mode. And that is all dependent on what you interact with on the last stage. Now, in each of the stages to progress, you have to activate a portal, which starts a boss fight. But on stage five, it's slightly different. The portal itself is interactable. Now, by default, it says the portal is aligned with the moon, which would take you to finish the game, quote unquote, and fight the final boss. Or you can align it with the planet. Now, if you align it with the planet, that is how you go and you roll over into the sort of endless mode I was talking about. But if you choose to go to the moon, you look at it and it seems even more alien than the planet you've been on. And everything is extremely different from what you've seen so far. And oddly quiet. Because throughout this entire game, there are enemies for the most part constantly spawning and attacking you. And that's another reason that keeps this game so interesting, is that there's not many times where it's a dull moment. And when it is, it feels eerie. 
And this is one of those times. Now, there are a few enemies as you walk through the desolate marble bridges that interconnect the floating islands on the moon. A large central island being held up by what looks like a hand-shaped rock formation. And in searching around, you see smaller islands that have these shrines. And they activate these large beacons of light. And then once you step into that main platform, you see... A boss bar at the top of the screen. The king of nothing, Mithrix. Remember that ancient lunar god seeking vengeance I told you about in the beginning? Well, this is him, and he is absolutely brutal. He has many AoE attacks, he moves around very quickly, giving you very little time to predict his movements, and he doesn't telegraph too many of his moves. And, don't forget, he's got like a one-shot KO move. Now this boss can be brutal, and really is, especially since I haven't played this game in a long time, or to any of the newer people who haven't played the game before. But, that's part of the thing that makes this game so fun, is the fact the bosses aren't easy. None of them really are, unless you know what you're doing. But this boss, even with some of the best equipment, and you have played so many times, he is still a struggle. And I think makes that a keystone of why Risk of Rain 2 is such an enjoyable game. Because even if you take all this time and you feel like you're destroying everything, you get to him and he really puts you in your place. After defeating Mithrix, you see a detonation counter start as he plans to destroy the moon along with himself. And you must venture to the trapped rescue ship and finally be saved. Hey, if you enjoyed the video and you want me to keep making more like this, let me know down in the comments. It greatly helps me and lets me know you guys enjoy this kind of content. Until the next video, see ya.